Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well and uh, welcome to Great Missenden where you join me just about to jump on my brand new Kawasaki Z900 RS. A bit of an update for you, a bit of a chat about uh, how I've been getting on with the bike, how I'm doing with running in and all that sort of thing. See you after the intro. So welcome back to the channel folks and uh, welcome back to my experiences with my brand new Kawasaki Z900 RS SE which I've now had for just about two weeks so I'm into that annoying kind of running in breaking in period so I thought it was a good opportunity to come out and just talk to you a bit about what uh, my approach to running in is and also my experiences so far and some lessons I've learnt on the bike that I hadn't picked up before when I've ridden these as loan bikes but you do pick up when you actually own one and you get to properly know the bike so the running in period on these is 600 miles or a thousand kilometers up to its first service and it's quite important to uh, run them in I think less so with modern bikes than old bikes because tolerance and so on manufacturing is much better than it used to be isn't it but uh, nonetheless it uh, I think is wise to sort of be a little bit sensible with the bike to start with just to make sure everything works as it should and everything's bedded in as it should be and uh, I suspect I don't know but I suspect things like the oil that goes into the bike when it comes out of manufacture is a bit thinner than the stuff that you would normally run on so that's why it's important to go and get your running in service done because they replace the oil with the with the normal operating stuff I'm guessing maybe you know more about this than me anyway I've been trying my hardest therefore to work towards that 600 miles as I say I've had the bike for 200 that's 200 I've had the bike for two weeks so far and I've done about uh, well 354.9 miles so far which I'm quite pleased about because ever since I've had this bike it has been raining and uh, it's been an absolute nightmare so today I've popped out showers are forecast in about an hour's time but I just thought I'd come out and put a few more miles on and give you a bit of an update on uh, how I'm getting on with the bike so uh, this running in game then there's all sorts of myths aren't there about running in everybody has their own view on it some people say you should just ride the bike normally some say you should thrash the pants off them some say you should baby them some say you should absolutely follow the manual so it's, uh, it's difficult to know what's true isn't it all I can say is what I've done with my bikes in the past uh, and it seems to have worked okay for me although I don't know how you'd know if it hadn't worked really but um, basically my approach is just to ride the bike pretty much normally don't let it labour and don't uh, absolutely thrash it try and ride on as varied roads as you can try not maybe to leave the RPM set in the same place for too long run through the gearbox as much as you can but don't be too anal about it just ride the bike normally so in the manual it says things like you know first hundred miles up to 4,000 RPM I think and then the next couple of hundred up to five and then once you're over 250 you can go up to six all that kind of thing I mean you can do it by the manual if you want of course Kawasaki know what they're doing and I'm sure it'll do no harm but I suspect a lot of that is to do with liability laws and things and those um, instructions haven't changed manufacturers have been saying that about running in bikes for years and years and as I say tolerances and manufacturing methods have got better since then I've no idea where I'm riding to by the way so I'm just gonna randomly ride just pop down here so this is the sort of riding I love doing on this sort of bike just bimbling around the, the lanes randomly this is the sort of thing that I bought this bike for so I'm not paying great attention to what revs I'm doing and stuff like that as I'm running her in on this ride I'm just going to ride her normally I'm, on these roads I'm not going to be going above 5000 rpm anyway because you just can't go fast enough I have done a bit of motorway riding on a bit faster roads taken up to 5000 rpm at which you're doing above legal speeds anyway so you don't need to be thrashing it during the running in period I'm soon going to be uh, taking her up to hopefully at the weekend my parents who live in Norfolk so there and back will be another 250 miles by which time she'll be up to that uh, 600 for the service so I need to get her booked in soon next time you see the bike probably will have had that service done so I've made one essential mod since uh, I showed you the bike in my unveil video and that is because so many people said whatever you do get yourself a radiator guard as soon as possible and a few people recommended different ones so I have fitted a radiator guard let me show you that
So let's show you the uh, the radiator guard that I put on. This is the one it's recommended by a number of you. This is from Evotech. Dead easy to fit. Just these two bolts come off. You put some little rubber bungs on there that are, that are, um, sort of spaces to keep it away from the radiator itself. Click so that these lips here. You've got to make sure you get the right model of uh, Z900 RS because the early ones I don't think had quite the same design of radiator. But it's really lightweight. Uh, aluminium I guess and uh, yeah it seems pretty good uh, and it looks good it's fairly you know unobtrusive it doesn't look a nightmare on there given this has got this massive radiator which in itself looks a nightmare but quite pleased with that Evotech radiator guard I think it cost me about 76 79 quid something like that uh, but yeah just stops all that some of that crud getting up there now I need uh, something to help with this so that radiator guard went on forthwith just because so many people said that I should do that And then the other mod that so many people recommended but I was going to do anyway is something that I don't normally do but in this case I will and that is to fit some fender extenders both front and back. I don't really like the looks of long mud guards on bikes but in the case of this bike where those header pipes are so exposed to all the crud I thought it was worth at least getting a fender extender on the front and while I'm at it might as well do the back as well. So I've got, uh, got a couple of those on order and those will be fitted as soon as they come in the next couple of days and then I won't be so worried about riding in the rain. The other thing that lots of people said on that unveil video was change the tyres and in fact that's something I talked about doing uh, but I have to say so far I found these uh, OEM Dunlops okay but then I've not ridden them in the absolute pissing rain so we'll see how that goes but uh, I don't intend to change them until I've got a bit of wear out of them. They seem pretty good in the dry, they seem quite sticky uh, but when, uh, when they are done I'll probably get some Michelin Road 6s fitted, I've got those on my GS and I have to say they're very very good tyres and again lots of people recommended them so that's probably the way I'll go once I've got a bit of wear out of these tyres or indeed if I ride these in the wet and find out they're absolutely horrible. And then the other thing that so many people said was get it remapped because the throttle is so snatchy, well again I'm quite happy to get it remapped but I have to say I don't find the throttle that bad, I don't know whether they've made some modifications on this latest bike this is the 2023 se model i've got i don't find the throttle that bad look i'm in fourth gear here i'm only doing 25 miles an hour there's absolutely no snatchiness that i can detect if i change her down look right here on second gear look 20 miles an hour seems pretty smooth i don't think it's worth at this point getting it remapped quite frankly we'll see once i've done some more town riding and that sort of thing see how it goes but actually the the throttle is certainly not as snatchy as uh, as for example my speed twin was before I got that sorted out on that one I've fitted the booster plug and the uh, throttle spacer and that sorted that out enough but that's still much more snatchy than this so I don't think I will be doing the remap just talking about uh, things I've learned let me take you through the pros and cons the sort of little lessons I've learned so far in this uh, short period of ownership to date so I suppose one lesson I should learn is to never leave my helmet balancing on the mirror like that. I often do that and I often get told off about it. I do apologise if it upsets you, but it's kind of handy when you're on a bit of muddy ground. Anyway, I've written down the lessons learned uh, since I've had the bike because uh, I don't want to forget anything. So let's start with the pros. First off, the handling on this spot on. I always knew that anyway. When I've borrowed these in the past, I've always said that the handling was good, but I've stayed here. Handling, light feeling and sporty. And I guess I'm comparing that uh, with other bikes I know like this. So compared to my Interceptor, compared to my Speed Twin, it feels light and sporty the engine is absolutely beautiful on this it is uh, i've already said it's a nippy bike but it, it sounds great the engine on here even though i've been keeping it not really much above 5000 rpm as i've been running in up to now now i've done the 350 plus miles i shall take her up to 6000 plus but uh, she even sounds good uh, up to 5000 rpm i have to say uh, the bike itself feels much lighter than you would expect moving it around the garage piece of cake uh, the weight seems to be kept quite low it just feels like a light bike to me much lighter again than my speed twin and a way lighter feeling than the interceptor which feels a heavy bike so that's great the seat on here super grippy this stuff that they've got this covered in is really really um, grippy you're not sliding around at all really gives you confidence if you want to hang off this bike you absolutely can but i wear jeans a lot when i'm riding my retro bikes and uh, in this case it just means you you know your confidence inspired because when you brake you're not sliding forward when you accelerate you're not sliding back so so that's brilliant as well 
Uh, great grunt as well in the lower mid range for a four pot, which normally you have to wind up. This thing just flies pretty much uh, everywhere. The torque on this is lovely. Uh, just basically overall, it's very easy to ride and it gives you great confidence. All right, so uh, not everything is uh, rosy in the garden. However, there are a few things about the bike that I've learned that I'm not so keen on. So first thing here I've said is turning circle isn't very good. Again, not a big deal, but if you're maneuvering the bike around in a tight space in your garage, then you're gonna have to get used to doing multiple point turns. So turning circle, not great on this bike. Um, I've said here, hard to tell which setting the heated grips are on due to the indicator set up. Uh, now again, I'm used to with heated grips on my Speed Twin, for example, you can see on the dash what level of heated grips you've got turned on. On this, you have to count the number of flashes that the heated grip indicator has. So, so far, it's summer, it's still July when I'm recording this, although you wouldn't necessarily know it. Um, I've not used the heated grips very much, but it's just something I'm aware is going to annoy me when I do come to use those. Um, something else, uh, the finishes on here are prone to scratching, I found. Very light scratching. I'm a little bit anal about looking after my bikes, and already there's some very light scratches on the tailpiece where there was some dust on it. I took a microfiber and I just brushed them off, and just a light brush, and I'm usually very careful about this, scratch that. And similarly, the... Um, the LCD readout as well, very prone to scratch, and again, gets dusty. I just gave it a quick wipe with a bit of um, spray and then a wipe, and it's already scratched. It's, that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, also, I think the tank is probably a little bit uh, prone to scratching as well, so really, I should put some sort of protection on there. Next thing I've got on my list here is the manual isn't very good. Now, when you buy the bike, I don't this is a, a, a minor point, but I just thought I'd point it out. You get a, a manual, uh, and in it, I couldn't even work out how you set the clock on the bike, uh, and I couldn't, and it had nothing about running in, for example. It was only much later when I thought, there must be something in the manual about this. I realised that the manual they give you, which is very thick, uh, is only actually like a, an overview. And for the full manual, you have to go to the internet and um, you know scan a barcode and, and you get the full manual that way, which I have now done. Uh, and that manual's fine, but it is electronic only. I, I'm kind of old school. I like a proper manual in my hands. So that's a bit naff. And then the last thing I've said here is that the side stand on here, it feels a little bit flimsy. It's just not quite as strong feeling as I'd like. Now, what I would say about all those cons that I've just listed is those are insignificant compared to the pros. The pros that I listed are much more important things. And overall, I'm super chuffed with the bike and uh, yeah, I'm absolutely loving my time with it. So there we go. That's a bit of an update for you on how I'm getting on with the mighty Kawasaki Z900 RSSE. Look at this uh, view here, absolutely lovely. Just a few miles from Great Bistenden and you've got this sort of scenery. I do love the Chilterns. Sometimes you don't appreciate what you've got in your own backyard, do you? Anyway, yes, back to the bike. So yeah, loving it so far. I have ridden the pants off it. I mean, given I've done, what, 357 miles now on it, uh, you know, that's already nearly four times what I did a year on the Panigale. So I do not miss that bike one iota. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. I love the looks of it, but I did not love the way it made me feel when I rode it, as in it was a torture rack, it was hot as hell. Uh, that was really jerky on the throttle, it was hard to ride, but mainly it was just the uncomfortable thing with it. If you're at sports bikes, then you love it, but uh, this bike is much more me. And, uh, well, we'll see how things go, but at the moment I'm thinking I'm likely to have this bike for a long time. This is uh, right up my street, this motorcycle. I'm really loving it. It's super smooth to ride, it sounds great, it's comfortable, it looks good. Yeah, really, really pleased with the purchase thus far. Of course, I am in the honeymoon period. I may well find some other things I don't like about the bike in the meantime, but I shall certainly be bringing all that detail to you over the next months and hopefully years as I get to know the bike. Blimey, it's a bit overgrown around here. All right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dunn Fly. Cheerio. It's a race home before the rain comes. Well, I've just timed this perfectly. Ah, oh, British summer, eh? Rubbish this year. Absolutely pants.